David Bowie, and we're on countdown across Australia. You asked for it, and we've delivered. Tonight you'll meet the very special Mr. I'll show us the way to the next little girl. Oh, don't ask why. No, don't ask why. But we must find the next little girl. Or if we don't find the next little girl. I tell you, we must die. I tell you, we must die. I tell you. The thing that happened is that there were three or four press people, I think, behind me in the line were saying, uh, uh, have you seen David Bowie yet? And I said, yeah, you can't miss him. He's just over there. He's got a, <laughs> rain, a green raincoat on and bright red hair. Yeah. And so they turned to me and said, is that David Bowie? And I said, yeah, I think that's him. And they went off and the poor guy got hassled for a bit. Shakespearean quote that the world is your stage. Have you used the world as your stage, do you think? Um, no, I think it's been, it's been straightforward theatre with music. Uh, it's, it wasn't that innovative, uh, except that it hadn't been used in rock and roll before. Right. It had been used in every other theatre form, but not rock and roll. And as rock and roll was on a stage, it seemed um, that it would be worthwhile trying to combine the two. Okay, so can we go down to, say, Golden Years? Golden Years was a, a very interesting song. <laughs> um, how, how come Golden Years? I mean, what possessed you to write that? Well, that was part of a, uh, an album, Station to Station. Right. Um, and Station to Station dealt with a character called the Thin White Duke, right. who was a European living in America who wanted to get back to Europe again. So the Golden Years, the whole feeling of nostalgia on that sort of a, uh, a deja vu thing about the album had to be apparent. And Golden Years sort of summed up his whole nostalgia for Europe. Fame. Fame is a bitter little song about management, <laughs> which became very successful, and I'm quite, I was astounded at the time. Well, can you explain more about fame? Because, I mean, like, a lot of people read a lot into fame. Well, it, what happened is that uh, John Lennon came to the sessions that I was working on in America, and we had been talking about what it was like to be managed and, and why, well, John had already broken free, of course, right. and I was breaking free at the time of management. Um, and it sort of was an obvious little thing that we should get hold of. What happened really, Carlos Alomar, my rhythm guitarist, had a riff that I'd been using for foot stomping, you know, rock and roll. Mm. Everybody young and old learns how to rock and roll. Do -do 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 -do. And we sort of said, let's take that riff and then write something over it. Right. Um, it was Carlos's riff. And then John was playing and he kept on coming on. I'm... I'll give you the guitar. I'm... Like that. Yeah, I said, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is John Lennon saying, I'm. <laughs> I'm. And I'll put an F in front of it, and that was it, really. <laughs> a rock star going into movies, which you know, many have tried, uh, you're one of the most, well, you are one of the most successful to go make that transition, probably for what you are. Uh, it's just talent. Yeah. No, forget it. <laughs> uh, do you want to go into it? I'm, I'm a it, creep. Is it, there going to be more movies in, in the future? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've I just done just a gigolo with David with Hemmings. And Marlon Dietrich. Yeah, Marlene Dietrich. Uh, well, Hemmings directed. Marlene Dietrich was, was in it. <laughs> oh, fantastically. And uh, I was um, in bed with Kim Novak, and I carried a pig, and I die in the end, which is um, 
Oh, well. That's how it starts. <laughs> uh, but I, and I won't make any decisions about doing any more films, really, as an actor. I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to be an actor, really. No? No. So can I ask I want to be a rock star. No, please, go on, let me. Okay. Um, why Ziggy Stardust? And why? I mean, like, it had such a in, big impact on everyone that I know, you know? I've just read, I read recently that it was investigative journalism taken to its extreme. Yeah? <laughs> that I wanted to um, um, find out what a superstar goes through, and so I had to create one and then make one. Ziggy was, no, they were all characters. Everything I've written up until the last couple of albums were characters, and they were environments, and I took the whole thing through on stage and in interview and in photographs and dress and everything. Every time I changed a character, I would become that character for the duration of that album. Mm. Um, that was my premise, really, was to um, create little novelettes for stage, little vignettes, and then perform them all the way through, right through to interviews, and then move on to another character. Heroes. It's, I mean, like it could almost be a pro song or an anti song. Heroes, heroes was about uh, um, what is sort of irreverently termed the faceless man, uh, the person on the street who at one time in his life must have his own chance at heroism, right. even if it's um, uh, an affair with somebody that he can feel that he's a hero. 